Hi, welcome to the Catalyst for Change Leadership Module. My name is Sally Creel and I'm the STEM and Innovation Supervisor. Today we're going to talk about being a catalyst for change. So I want you to play along with me for a second. Take, think of a time when you were part of a change initiative. All right, so just take a moment. It could be anything you were part of that was a change initiative. Oh, I don't know, say like transitioning from being a face-to-face -face teacher to a virtual teacher. But you can pick anything. All right, everybody got something in your mind? Okay, good. All right, how did that change initiative go? Did you experience confusion, anxiety, resistance, frustration? Did you feel like you were on a treadmill? Or did none of these things happen and it just worked out great for you? All right, if you're kind of giggling right now because you maybe experienced all of these things during your change, particularly if you chose the example of transitioning from a face-to-face -face teacher to a virtual instructor at the beginning of the school year. Yeah, we can all kind of giggle a little bit about that. Take a look at what are the conditions that are necessary for successful change implementation. So if we want the change to happen where there isn't any confusion, it does work great. These are the things that we need to have in place. We need to have a vision, or there needs to be a clearly communicated vision. We need to have skills, we need to have incentives, we need to have the resources, and we need to plan. If we can do all of those things together, then we can create a sustainable change. But notice what happens when one of these things is missing. So when the vision is missing, we have confusion. We don't know why we're doing what we're doing. When the skills are missing, we feel stress. We are anxious because we don't know how to do what we're being asked to do. When the incentives are missing, there's resistance. You don't really see the benefit for doing something. When the resources are missing, there's frustration. And when there doesn't really seem to be a solid plan in place, you just feel like you're on a treadmill because you're not really getting anywhere. To dig into these a little bit more, the Things that we need to think about whenever we're trying to in, um, integrate a change initiative, we need to stop and make sure we have a clear vision. Why are we doing this? And we need to communicate that to all of our stakeholders. We need to make sure that we're providing our teachers or anyone that we're going to be working with the skills that they need so that we can combat any anxiety that they might have. We need to stop and look at the incentives. What are the reasons, the perks, the advantages to doing this approach? so that we can combat any resistance that might be out there. It's helpful when you can talk to your peers and kind of think through what are some incentives that might be necessary. Resources. What are the tools and the time needed to combat frustration? I know personally when I heard that we were going to have three weeks, three weeks of pre-planning to transition from face-to-face -to, -face to online, I was like, oh, cool, what are we going to do for three weeks? And then as we got in the middle of it, I was like, oh, my gosh, three weeks is not enough. I need an entire month. But, you know, it's still helpful to have us to have time to plan so that we have a clear plan in place of what we're going to be doing. And I think that that's always an opportunity to get better so that we do a better job of planning all the time. All right, so I want you to think of a different change initiative, maybe something that you're looking to do at your school. From my lens, I work with a lot of schools that are trying to implement new models of instruction. So looking at layering in an opportunity for STEM integration or STEM-infused learning in their classrooms. But think of any change initiative. It could be that you're moving from one grade level to another grade level. It could be that you're trying to implement a new curriculum in your classroom. It could be that you're trying to do a new schedule. It could be anything. So I want you to take a moment. If you need to pause, pause the video if you need to while you think of something. All right, so we're going to do a two-minute evaluation think protocol. So you're going to have two minutes to jot down ideas on a graphic organizer, and I'm going to show you the graphic organizer in a moment. It was also linked in the module, so you could have downloaded that and seen it at the beginning. You can pause right here and download it if you didn't get it. But while you're on there, I want you to think about that change initiative. What are you doing that's working? What evidence do you have about what's working? What are you doing that's not working? What evidence do you have that's tell, that tells you that something's not working? And then what are we going to do about what's not working? So think of that change initiative you're involved in, and you're going to go ahead and do all of these. Here's the visual of our think evaluation protocol. All right, so pause here for a second. Give yourself two minutes. I'm not going to pause the video for two minutes and make you listen to silence. All 
All right, so I'm gonna we're coming back now, hopefully after your pause for a second. And when you were thinking of your change initiative and what was working, sometimes some of those things aren't really tangible, but you could feel, like you could feel the staff morale was positive, or maybe that was evidence of what wasn't working, that the teachers were stressed, the teachers were frustrated, people were snippy. Those are things that are actual, you know, that's part of that process, and those are things that really do happen. So when you have to start writing down a list of what are you going to do to change, sometimes you're not really sure. That's where having a, a partner, a buddy, someone to bounce ideas off of is really beneficial. One of the things we do at the central office whenever we are working to roll out programs, plans, or implement something throughout the year, we create operational management plans. And I wanted to share, you, share a couple of these with you because I thought it might be something beneficial to help you think about how we conceptualize something we're going to be implementing. Usually it's a change of some type or a program or a process and what that looks like over time so that we don't have all those things we were talking about earlier with the confusion, the anxiety, the resistance, the frustration, or the treadmill effect because we tried to think through what are the pieces that we're going to need. So let's take a look at some operational management plans. Here's an example of an OMP for STEM and innovation for a program that we do every summer called STEMapalooza. So you see here where we have outlined who are the owners of this event. First of all, we said what STEMapalooza was. We outlined who the owners are. We looked at who are the people we're gonna have as lead supporting staff, our leadership supporting staff, and then who are some other people we're gonna reach out to that maybe aren't necessarily Cobb County employees or are Cobb County employees, but some other people that are gonna have some roles and responsibilities in it. Then we just tried to outline what are some big rocks that we need to have completed in June, August, January, March, and May. So those were the dates and timelines that we picked for our uh, OMP. So each month we check back with our OMP and we projected those things and we do an update. So you see here I've color coded mine. Our August updates are in this blue color. So I highlighted the things that we got finished in blue. This is what it looked like when we started getting the stuff together in January. Some of the work that I was projected to be done in March was actually finished in January. So we were able to go ahead and highlight those things. And then you see what it looks like in March. We went back, we added in some things, and so we had highlighted so it was color-coded so I knew what had been done, what hadn't been done. And then we got to regroup um, in March. You know, it started in March, but this was our update in May that we kind of took a moment we were like, well, we, are, we thought we might be able to go ahead and offer it, but then in May we realized we were not able to because we didn't know exactly how long everything was going to last. So we went back through and we revamped and we came up with a new proposal for a different innovative idea for professional development. That's a whole nother topic, but sometimes out of change that we hadn't necessarily planned comes the opportunity for innovation. So one of the things that you, we want you to do right now is to develop an action plan for a change, a goal, initiative, something that you're looking to implement in your world. It could be something that you're part of in the larger scope of your uh, school. It could be something for your team. It could be something that maybe you want to send out a, a monthly newsletter. I mean, it could be anything like that, or it could be something specific to your classroom. So I want you to take a moment, and what will your action plan look like? So this will be your reflection task that you're actually going to do, and you're going to submit this in our interactive teams component that are part of our game. And so we want you to create an action plan for your goal or your initiative. Identify who's going to be the owner of this goal, of this initiative. Who can you partner with to really enhance? We know that when we broaden the scope of individuals that we're working with, yes, it sometimes makes it a little more challenging, but it usually makes that work so much more valuable when you have someone that you can partner with on a project and give you some different perspectives, some different ideas, and someone to really bounce and round out what you're doing. Identify some clear goals and outcomes that you want as part of your project. And then identify a timeline and benchmarks for your goals from August, December, and April. Or you can pick different dates, but give yourself a timeline with benchmark goals for each one of those dates and things you want to accomplish. And then I should probably add another bullet on there that says, revisit your timeline. So set appointments with yourself to go back and look at it. It's not good enough to come up with a plan if we never go back and revisit it. I wish you luck as you try to manage change initiatives. It is never an easy task and there are always ways to improve, but the journey, it will be a whole lot better if you can take the time and start try to think through all the steps and pieces that you will need.